So tonight, Andrea, who is Pastor Matt's wife and also my mama, is going to bring the word, and I always just enjoy getting to sit under her teaching, her leadership. Um, You know, she's got a lot of wisdom that she's gleaned from many years of ministry. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pray, and then I'll turn it over to her. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service tonight, Lord, this opportunity to come and be refreshed, be encouraged by the word, Lord. Anoint Andrea to minister, Lord, and anoint our hearts to hear what you would want to speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's okay. Okay. (laughs) I did have a scripture, but she, she came up a little early. So I wanted to share a scripture out of Matthew tonight, starting in verse Matthew 11, verse 28. Just to encourage you guys, this is one of my favorite scriptures, and I just felt led to to share that as we get ready to receive tonight. So in verse 28, Jesus is speaking. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So, Just wanted to encourage you guys this evening as we prepare to hear the word, whatever you came in with tonight, if you're carrying a burden from work or from family life at home or just from thoughts in your head, I encourage you just to give that to Jesus. It says when we let him teach us, he will give rest to our soul. So I'm just going to pray that over us, that as you minister, that we'll be able to receive that rest and that encouragement. So Andrea Nichols. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. That was quite a crowd that went for youth group tonight. That's amazing. Will you hold that for me? And uh, is it, Vinny, are you back in the booth? I forgot to send scriptures to you. So if I yell them to you, can you pop them up for me? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. All right. I want to start off with a story tonight. It's not a joke, really, but it's kind of a story. So one day... An old German shepherd starts chasing rabbits and before long discovers that he's lost. Wandering about, he notices a panther heading rapidly in his direction with the intention of lunch. The old German shepherd thinks, oh, I am in deep trouble now. Noticing some bones on the ground close by, he immediately settles down to chew on the bones with his back to the approaching cat. Just as the panther is about to leap, the old German shepherd exclaims loudly, Boy, that was one delicious panther. I wonder if there are any more around here. Hearing this, the young panther halts his attack in mid-strike, and a look of terror comes over him, and he slinks away into the trees. Whew, says the panther. That was close. That old German shepherd nearly had me. Meanwhile, a squirrel who had been watching the whole scene from a nearby tree figures he can put this knowledge to good use and trade it for protection from the panther. So off he goes. The squirrel soon catches up with the panther, spills the beans, and strikes a deal for himself with the panther. The young panther is furious at being made a fool of and says, hey, here, squirrel, hop on my back and see what's going to happen to that conniving canine. Now the old German shepherd sees the panther coming with the squirrel on his back and thinks, what am I going to do now? But instead of running, the dog sits down with his back to his attackers, pretending he hasn't seen them yet. Just when they get close enough to hear, the old German shepherd says, where's that squirrel? I sent him off an hour ago to to bring me another panther. (laughs) How'd I do? Did I do okay? All right. Okay. You'll have to tell Pastor Matt. Okay. All right. I want to talk about our, our passion and our pursuit of God tonight, okay? What you're passionate about becomes your priority, and your priority becomes the thing that you pursue, okay? Pursue means, you know, just like in that story, there's a chase going on, and you're going to follow and try to catch or capture something or someone, and usually the, the pursuit is either for a long distance or a long time. So, If I had a dream to become a concert pianist, which I do not, (laughs) to pursue that dream would take a long time. It doesn't just start and then finish, okay? And when you're pursuing something, you haven't attained it yet, right? You're trying to catch it. 
We had a dog when I was growing up named Duke. He was part German Shepherd, part we don't know what. Uh, but we lived out in the country, and he would chase lightning. <laughs> He would chase cars, he would chase bicyclists, and I mean, just ferociously barking. And I mean, lightning would be flashing all across the sky, and he's just tearing across through the fields and through the yard, just trying to catch this lightning. He was in pursuit, okay? And thankfully, he was never able to catch any of those things, right? But he would reach a point where he would stop and turn around, and he's going to come home. So maybe he was tired, maybe the thing he was chasing got too far out of reach. I mean, he can't catch a car going 50 miles an hour. Or maybe he was distracted by something else, you know, squirrel, you know, and he started chasing something else. Uh, have you ever gotten stuck in a rabbit hole on the internet, like you go to search something, one, you know, you're research researching a recipe, and then all of a sudden, you know, you are in some just crazy, you've 45 minutes been in some crazy topic and you think, how did I even get here? <laughs> okay, you just get, get distracted sometimes. So he, he could have gotten distracted by the things that he chased. Uh, and in our pursuit of God, when you're born again, it's a little bit different. Because when you're born again, you've already got him, right? So how do you pursue God when you've already got him in your heart? But with God... You know, unlike Duke, who never got what he was chasing, we've got God, but you'll never reach the end of having him. Like, the more you pursue God, the more you get of him. And there's more to a relationship with God that we can ever dream of attaining. And, you know, if you guys think back to those of you who are married, your dating relationship, you know, guys, you're pursuing that girl and you do things to show her how much you, you like her. And, you know, if she likes you back, then, you know, there, it goes a little further. And then eventually, you know, first comes love, second comes marriage, third comes somebody with a baby carriage. Right. <laughs> and at this point, guys, you've attained what you were pursuing, right? Right? Right. If you get married, you've attained what you were pursuing. You were pursuing that girl. And, but what happens when you stop, if you stop pursuing her after the wedding day? Is it going to go well? What, Kurt? She'll hit you with her cane, okay? <laughs> Not speaking from experience, I'm sure. There's the cane proof, everyone. Uh, but it, that relationship will become stale, and lonely, and there will be frustration and emptiness. And the, the same is true in our relationship with God. You know, he wants to be our friends. He wants to have that relationship with us. And we can get born again and experience that new life in Christ, but if we stop our pursuit of God right there, we are shortchanging so much benefit into our, our, our own lives, communion with God, blessing that he wants to pour out, and our walk with God will get stale, and we will experience loneliness and frustration and emptiness, okay? But in both with marriage and with God, if we can continue to pursue that relationship, we're going to experience blessing, okay? We sang a song tonight called In the Room. I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you move. And, and, you know, that song is not just a song with a cool beat, and it's not just a song with, you know, a cool melody, but it has inspiration of faith behind it if you engage in worship okay if you think about what you're singing if you think about about your your worship and your praise to God it will inspire faith if you apply it to your life okay and we know the story of that song um, comes from Mark chapter 2 so Vinny if you wouldn't mind popping up Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 and if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. Look at that lightning fast scripture pop up. Thank you, Vinny. Let's read. And again, he entered Capernaum, this being Jesus, after some days, 
and it was heard, and the King James Version says it was noised abroad, that he, Jesus, was in the house. Immediately, everybody say immediately. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, everybody say immediately. When Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately, everybody say immediately. That's really not a point in the message, but I'm just trying to keep you engaged, so, okay. (laughs) Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. So in this story, we have four men who are in pursuit of something. They're trying to pursue a healing for their friend. They encountered an obvious obstacle, like the house was too crowded to get in. They can't get anywhere near Jesus. But they didn't stop their pursuit. They were willing to do whatever it took to get that man in the presence of Jesus. And, you know, unlike my dog Duke, they were not willing to give up the chase. They went to the top of the roof, they tore off the roof, and they lowered him down. And that's what our pursuit of God needs to look like, okay? Maybe we hit an obstacle of church hurt, you know, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Sometimes people in church can hurt us, you know, they say bad things, they do bad things, and and it causes hurt to come into our life. And we know that it happens, but we also know it's not God who does it, okay? So we don't stop our pursuit of, of the Lord when something like that happens. And I know there's several of you in here who have, you know, who have come here who have had previous hurt in previous churches and it's hard it's hard to walk through it's 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 difficult and and but I I appreciate your faith so much in that you didn't let it stop you from continuing your walk with the Lord you continued your pursuit with with God and you're growing as a result you know just like we talked about earlier if if you would stop in that pursuit you're going to get stale and you, the, the hurt that's there then becomes a hardened heart and bitterness and, you know, all those, all those things that happen when we pull away from the Lord. But just the fact that you continue on and you continue to, to press in in your faith, that, that's proof that you are already in pursuit of God. So keep pursuing him. And we also know sometimes bad things happen to good people, okay? We all know that. And, you know, maybe we hit a point in our own life where we're the good person that the bad thing has happened to. And we're like, God, what in the world? How, why, why is this happening? And, and that can be an obstacle to your faith if you let it. But you can continue to pursue God. You push through those things. Keep searching out the word. Keep praying. Keep coming to church. Keep being discipled. And that pursuit will get you through. You may not always know the answer to those questions until you get to heaven. But, but God will draw you to him in a way that, that that thing... You know, the word tells us all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his his purpose. And so that thing that you didn't understand is going to become something that's a testimony in your life when you continue to pursue God. So we just have to pursue, dig deeper during those times. So I just want to encourage you tonight, no matter what you're going through, 
Don't give up your pursuit of God for anything. But what, what does that actually look like? What does pursuing God actually look like? Is it wearing a cross necklace? Is it having a faith, hope, love sign on your wall? <laughs> How many have those? I know you do. Okay. <laughs> having a honk if you love Jesus bumper sticker, anyone? No, that, that was kind of 70s. Um, let's see here. Wearing a Christian t-shirt and listening to Air One. Okay. <laughs> those are outward signs that we wear or we display or that someone could, you know, be an indicator for someone that, oh, this might be someone who pursues God, okay? But that's not a formula that plays out every time. Just because somebody has their radio turned to the Christian radio station doesn't mean that they're pursuing God. Just because somebody has a bumper sticker that says, honk if you love Jesus on the back of their car, but then they cut you off in traffic and, and flip you off, <laughs> then you know, you know that's kind of an indicator maybe they're not pursuing the Lord. So how can we know if someone is pursuing God? And really, how do we know? Let's shine the light on ourselves. How do we know in our hearts if we are tru truly pursuing God? So let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20, and I'll give Vinny a second to get that up. And this is Jesus talking. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Everybody say, Know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs and thistle from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Okay, so the word is telling us how you're going to know if somebody's pursuing God. You will know them by the fruits that they display. Okay, what are those fruits? What are they supposed to be known by? Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. Verses 16 through 26. <clears throat> and it says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, flesh <laughs> lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that is not the fruit that we want to bear, right? All that list. But the fruit of the Spirit, everybody say the fruit of the Spirit, of the Spirit. is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So, you know, the first thing is Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. Now we found what the fruits are that we're supposed to be displaying in our lives. If we are displaying these fruits, then it is an evidence that, that we are pursuing God, that we are walking in the Spirit. So now the next question is, how do we get this fruit? Let's turn to John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8.
It says, I am the true vine. Who do you think is talking? Jesus. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word, word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Everybody say, abide in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather him and throw them into the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So the evidence of pursuit is fruit. We get the fruit by abiding with him. We want to be in the room with him. We want to seek his face in prayer. We want to study the word. Um, Val, is Val in here tonight, Val Garrison? Over in King's Kids? Okay. Okay. Uh, she, I want to read something that she was inspired by the Lord to read back in December. And I asked her permission tonight already if I could share it. And it's just titled, Abide. Abide in me, I'll make my home in you. Remain with me, I'll lead you in all truth. Stay long in my word, no, please don't rush. With breath of heaven, all cares are hushed. Come sit with me, yes, sit a while. Make time with me, your soul will smile. Abide in me and rest assured. Remain with me, your joy will endure. With long life I will satisfy. Yes, come, come quickly and abide. I love that. I mean, just, just think about that. The, the, the Lord is saying, abide, stay, don't rush. Make time, remain, get here quick, and then stay here. Zachary um, just got done with the Marines, and I know Seth is a Marine, and they used to, the thing that they would say is, you hurry up and wait, right? <laughs> and that's what Jesus wants to do. He, he wants us to hurry up and then just wait with him and wait on him and allow him to speak and to be in his presence. And here's really where I want to get to tonight. Um, back in November, this really, really jumped off the page at me. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 33. And we'll start at verse 7. <clears throat> 33, sorry. Exodus 33. There it is. Thank you, Vinny. You're awesome. And verse 7 said, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the ta Tabernacle of Meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was, whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle, that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses." All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. So I want to unpack this a little bit, okay? The Israelites experienced a visible manifestation of the presence of God. Every time Moses went into that tabernacle, it says the pillar of fire, or cloud, 
pillar of cloud, came down and appeared. And the Lord would talk to Moses face to face like a friend. Pastor Matt was just talking about that on Sunday with communion. He wants he wants friendship out of us. He wants that relationship where we talk to him and he talks to us. And, and so that is exactly what was happening with Moses. So it says, the people saw the cloud and stood at their tent doors and worshiped God. So they stayed off at a distance. They were happy to worship God for what Moses was experiencing. Wow, that's awesome. Praise God. Look at look at Moses. He's talking to God that, you know, this is wonderful. You know, good for you, Moses. But they didn't approach to abide with the Lord. They were happy to be associated with the blessing at a distance, okay, and didn't pursue for themselves. So, church, I want to be so careful. Like, how many teens were up here tonight? 40? 44? You counted. Mark, you're so awesome. I, you're, that's one of your jobs, though, right? Oh. <laughs> 44 teens up here tonight worshiping God. And we know, we've seen since summer camp, the move of God that's happening in our youth group and in our teens, our, our schools and our community. I, I talked to one of the teachers at the high school this week, and he said, it's just like, I mean, you can see it. These, these groups of kids are getting together, and he hears their conversation at school, and they're, and they're talking about the Lord, and they're encouraging one another. And it's awesome. But let's not Let's be careful that we're not like those Israelites who are just standing back in the, at the tent door worshiping God for what's happening to Moses. And, you know, you might be in the 13th row. I don't even know if there are 13 rows, so don't count and don't get under condemnation. I was going to say the back row, but then I, would, I was worried that David and Kate would get all under condemnation. Don't be sitting in any row and just watch what's happening in our youth and not engage that for yourself, not pursue God for yourself. We can say, praise God, look at those teenagers, doggone it, that's just wonderful, that's just awesome. And then go back to your life where your relationship with God is stale, you haven't pursued him, you're not hungry for the word, you have, you know, maybe hit a roadblock where, you know, you still come to church and you, you still wear your Christian t-shirt and you still listen to Air One, but you aren't in that pursuit of God because you aren't developing the fruits anymore. You're happy to just watch everybody else get blessed. You know, we had so many people come up on Sunday when uh, John and Laura Madden were here and get prayed for and received healing, and we rejoice with them and we praise God for that. But don't just sit back and say, praise God for those people who got healed. And don't pursue God for yourself. We've got to pursue the Lord for our own selves. Don't be content to just be associated with the move of God that's happening here. You know, it's just riding in the wake of what's happening. God is absolutely pouring out his spirit in this place. And it's for all of us. But we have to want it and we have to pursue it. Did you notice the verse at the very end of that passage? Let's look at verse 11 again. Exodus 33, 11. Thank you. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Joshua stayed in the tent of meeting after Moses had been there speaking with God. He wanted God's presence. He didn't care that everybody else stayed back at their tents. He wasn't content to just observe it from afar like everybody else. He wasn't, you know, in the back row on Sunday morning just, just, just enjoying the blessing. He didn't care that he was the only one who stayed. He wanted that presence of God for himself. He wanted to experience God for himself. And what happened while he was there? His faith was built, right? He, because he wasn't willing to leave. He wanted to be in the room with God. 
He was abiding. He was waiting. Pursuit of God is what happens when no one else is watching. Joshua was in the tent of meeting all by himself. It wasn't corporate worship. Praise God for corporate worship. It builds us up. But if your only time with the Lord is Wednesday night and Sunday morning, you're missing your pursuit of God. It's what happens in private where you are abiding with the Lord. And your pri- is, are you reading the word? Are you studying the word? Are you talking to him? And are you waiting for him to talk back to you? Because he will. He absolutely will. That was one of the things that, that really came out when we did our women's fast in, in January was taking the space to listen, not just going to God and talking to him, telling him all the things you want and all the things you need, but talking to him as a friend and then pausing and waiting for him to answer. Have you ever been in a friendship where <laughs> you can't get any words in because the other person talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and talks? And talks, and talks? That's not fun, you know, because they don't learn anything about you. They don't get to know you, okay? And if we want to get to know our Father, we've got to allow Him to speak to us. So we want to seek God not just for what's in His hand. You know, that's the blessing. You know, what's in His hand. And He wants to bless us. Don't get me wrong. And it's not wrong to ask Him for things. But to seek His face in order to know him more, to become more like him. Joshua, the only one who stayed in the tent of meeting after Moses left. And he was one of two spies who had the faith that with God they could take the promised land. And it was Joshua that was chosen to lead the people when Moses died because he pursued God. He wanted to be in that presence. He saw the manifestation and knew that it was for him too. Okay. Uh, Let's turn to James chapter four, verses six through 10. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And that's just giving us a little picture of of part of what it looks like when we, we take that time to abide with the Lord. You know, when we get into his presence and we start doing more than just asking him for things, you know, he, the Holy Spirit has a way of gently convicting us of, of sin. And he will point things out in our hearts. And, and what, then it's our job to recognize it and to listen and to repent and draw close and, and let him cleanse you. You know, that's the part it said about purifying your hearts. He wants to purify our hearts. That, the only way that happens is through abiding with him and pursuing him and being in that, that private place of fellowship with God. You know, the Bible talks about David was a man who pursued God. He was a man after God's own heart. And, you know, David started off as just a shepherd boy. He was the youngest in his family. He had no, um, there, there was no real hope of him really accomplishing anything because the way it worked in, in that time in the Bible is the firstborn got all the stuff. The firstborn was the most important. And then the farther down the line you got, the less important you were. And so David had, had no, uh, n- no hope of, of being important, but he spent his time in the fields with the sheep and he worshiped God. 
and he developed a relationship with God, and he learned that closeness with the Lord, and, and he, he learned about God. He became friends with God. He was a man after God's own heart. That all happened before he was anointed king, before he was called to play before Saul, before he killed Goliath, before his name was ever mentioned in Scripture, God had chosen him. And he was a man after God's own heart, and it was his worship that got God's attention. He worshiped God before there was turmoil, before there was crisis. He wasn't asking for stuff. He wasn't asking to be promoted out of the pasture. He wasn't asking to have a more important job. He wasn't asking to be wealthy. He wasn't asking to be famous. He was just seeking God, okay? He was chosen by God based on, to be king based on what God saw in his heart. God saw David chasing after him. So I just really want to encourage us tonight, and I want to challenge us that, that we need to pursue the Lord and, and evaluate in our own hearts where we are in that pursuit. You know, have we, have we let things get stale maybe? Are we, uh, have we been content to just, you know, maybe you've been saved for 20, 30 years and you feel like you've seen it all, you've seen all the trends and, you know, now the, the young people, it's, it's their turn to, you know, come up and take over, but it doesn't matter what age you are, your pursuit of God should never change. And if you've allowed that, you know, kind of complacency to come into your relationship with the Lord, I would just challenge you, man, shake that off and stir, stir up your passion for him again and stir and, and get into his presence and spend time with him and ask him to, to revive that passion because he will. And then just hang there with him. You know, Jesus wants us to just hang out with him and be in his presence and let him talk to you. And he will, he will heal hurts sometimes that you don't even know are there when we take time with him. You know, so many times people have struggles where that they want prayer for and we're all about praying with you and agreeing with you but if we would take the time to just go to the lord first and what i mean it, we have direct contact with god you know pastor matt is great i love him he's my husband <laughs> i think he's a great preacher you know i think he prays great Hannah's great, you know, our, our staff is great, but there is no greater connection than your, your direct access to God, and you don't have to wait to get in a special prayer line. You can speak to God directly with your own faith, be in his presence, and you know, being in his presence and worshiping God isn't about just turning on worship music. You can worship God without music. It's just like you know, it's, it's hard to be alone with God when you're not alone. <laughs> if you got your phone and if the, the kids are still up and, you know, I mean, just send your friends home, send the kids to bed early, put your phone away, turn off the TV, get to a place of quiet and be with God and worship him out of the depths of your soul and out of the, the depths of your heart. And, and, and what he does during those times is so wonderful. And I, I'm hoping that you're getting hungry for that tonight. I'm hoping that you're getting encouraged that you don't have to be, you know, holding a microphone in order to be in God's presence. You can be in, in God's presence yourself, no matter what your age is, no matter how, not even how long you've been saved. You don't have to get to a certain point in your life. You don't have to get rid of this sin and this sin and this sin and this sin before, before you can have that fellowship with God. You can have that fellowship with God right now. And then as you do, those things start falling off, start falling off, and your heart is cleansed, and your heart is healed, and you get filled with joy, and you get filled with peace, and you get filled with strength, and you get filled with vision and purpose and passion. And he wants to do that for each one of us. Amen? Amen. Well, I have a few more pages, but I think, I think that's where we'll stop tonight. So let's pray. And then I just want to encourage you, you know, we've, we've talked before and we've, we've announced before 
Our, our church is open during the week, during office hours. You can come in at any time if you want to use the sanctuary to pray. Our, our altar time is always open after service to pray, before service, pray. What, I mean, this is, this is a, God's house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. And that's one of our, that's one of our uh, pursuits this year, our vision for our church uh, peg, prayer, evangelism, and giving. And so, you know, if you, if you don't have to be in, in this church to pray, but if it helps you, then come. You know, you can come at any time, and we will turn on the lights in here, and we will allow you to come pray. But let's, let's pray tonight. I just wanted to remind you of that, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Lord God, that you are in the room with us. And Lord, we want to be here with you. And, and Lord, we want to abide with you. And we want to have fruit in our lives. And we want to have evidence of the pursuit of you in our lives. And, and Lord, help us to learn how to wait. Lord, we're always, we, we get busy. And, and we have goals for every day that need to be accomplished. And we have checklists. And we want to be productive. But, but when it comes to our, our time with you, Lord, help us to put all those thoughts to the side and take the time to be in your presence. And Lord, not just seek you for your hand, but seek you for your face. Lord, that you would change us, that you would purify us, that you would draw us close to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that, uh, that we are not going to be the people who are content with watching the blessing from a distance. Lord, we want the blessing. We want your presence in our lives for ourselves. In Jesus' name, help us to be drawn to you. And Lord, your, your word has promised if we draw near to you, that you will draw near to us. And we thank you for that promise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we go tonight, I thank you for just keeping us in remembrance. We are ambassadors for you. We can speak for you, Lord, that that you would just use us in every relationship, Lord, to bring light and bring life and bring hope in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Matt's trip tonight, Lord, that he, that he is ministering to those pastors, Lord, speaking a word of God in due season, to pastors who sometimes get weary. And Lord, I thank you that uh, as, as he's ministering, that you're pouring back into him, strengthening his body, keeping him healthy in Jesus' name, and he's coming home safely. In the name of Jesus, we worship you and we honor your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you, and you can be dismissed.